Welcome, welcome. This is Marnie Swedberg welcoming you to hosting successful women's events with our guest today, Yvonne Khan. And I'm excited to share Yvonne with you. She's going to be talking about why now is a great time to host a women's event, how to form and keep a great team that works beautifully together year after year, why volunteers are the most important part of any organization and how to recruit more. Also, five simple strategies to grow your audience seven ways to bring groups of women to your event, the eight-step formula for holding a successful con conference. And also we are going to be sharing about how to think that it's never, uh, never too late, that you can do this. Even if you've been thinking about it for a long time, now is the time. Our guest today is Yvonne Kant. She's the founder and director of Day of Joy Conferences. She's a real down-to-earth, relatable, and inspirational speaker. She's the author and collaborator of many things and I'm excited to welcome her here. You can learn more about Yvonne over at YvonneKunt.com and you can invite her to speak over at WomenSpeakers.com. So excited to welcome you, Yvonne. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Yvonne yeah. Conti, by the way. Conti, okay. Conti, you, yeah. You know what? And I'm sure I've known that. And I yeah, well, that. we all, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, it's great to be here and to see you. I'm so happy to be able to see you. Yeah, I know. Great. And we I'm so excited. Conferences can be going again. And this is a good yeah. time to yeah. be a woman. <laughs> well, it's a good time to be a, any time is a good time to be a woman. Honey. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> but it's a good time to be in the business of conferences and be yes. a speaker because mm -hmm. we've been we've been, you know, searching for some kind of hope and and some kind of encouragement the last three to four years have been very difficult for all of us. But um, I think women in general are like, we're like a sponge. We just want to be with other women and yeah. laugh and enjoy and hear the word of God. So I, you know, we did a smaller version a couple of months ago and it was packed. Yeah. I mean, we did an evening of joy instead of a day of joy. Yeah. We didn't serve any food and we kept everybody yeah. <laughs> all that. But we had to turn people away. We didn't have enough room. Yeah. For so people are starving for this. You know, and you are a survivor of COVID. You got it almost right away. <laughs> yeah, I got it in 219. In December of 219, before anybody even knew what it was. And at the time they thought it was pneumonia, but then they found out shortly after that. But you know what? I'm healthy now. I'm strong now. The Lord brought me through it. And I don't even like to go back to that. I just want to move forward. I wanted to just touch on it a moment longer, though, oh, okay. because your testimony um, really affected me because you oh. are a speaker and you were without a voice for a long time. Yeah, I, I lost my ability to speak without gasping for air and and choking and i knew in my heart that that was the devil trying to take away my voice for jesus because mm -hmm. you know i for 30 years i have been a speaker yeah. and what what could he take from me that would mm -hmm. damage the mission the most my voice mm -hmm. and i really thought my life was over because of course it's <laughs> not only uh, as a Christian speaker, but my day job is a motivational speaker for corporate America. Right. So I had no income for 18 months, yeah. not a drop. But God, yeah. but he takes care of us. But God, but, but God. God. <laughs> Love that phrase. Yeah. Thank so back. yeah. Now is a great time to host women's events. And we just want to encourage you to step out and be brave. We're going to be talking this uh, little it, uh, time right here together about how to do that. And one of the key things, and you've been doing these, um, you've been hosting, not only do you speak at all kinds of events and conferences, yeah. but you've been hosting your own for many years. And you know that team is just critical. Yes. For 13 years, we've had what's called the Day of Joy. It's a full day conference, a Christian conference, and it's the best day of the year for me, <laughs> always. But um, the first and foremost thing is your team. I mean, if you don't have a good team of volunteers, it's impossible to get this done. And the number one thing I tell people who want to be on our team is that you must be madly in love with Jesus. Yes. If you're not head over heels, madly in love with Jesus, <laughs> you won't be able to do this job. Because one mm. of the best things 
that these volunteers do is they are the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When people walk through that door, I tell them all the time, when anybody comes through that door, if they're grumpy, if they're miserable, no matter what their thing is, you know, if they come to the table and say, Yvonne said I could get in for free, let them in for free. If they come in <laughs> and say, Yvonne said I could have a free book, give them a free book. You know, never say no. Hmm. Because if somebody's going to come to the table and lie to you like that, they need to be here. That's what I tell you. Know? <laughs> so, I, I, you know, when you're doing something like this, never, ever, ever think about the money because yeah. you won't hmm. make it. Think about what are you giving the public? Hmm. You want to give that woman that comes through that door the best day she's ever had. Hmm. And in order to do that, I think the volunteers need to uh, know one another, love one another. Mm. So you have to do some kinds of, um, mm -hmm. you know, have them all to your house for a dinner party. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you have your meetings, make it personal. Get to know your volunteers. Don't let mm -hmm. them just be a name. Yeah. They need to be your friends. Now, I didn't know any of these people before they became volunteers, but now they're all my dear friends and I love them with all my heart. Right. So the biggest thing is at the end, you need to recognize these women and men. Sometimes we have men that mm -hmm. help us out. You need to give them gifts, <laughs> legitimate gifts that are, you're thanking them. Listen, we love you. We want you to have this, whatever it might be. Um, the first year that I did the day of joy, I had no, idea. even though I've been a speaker for 30 years, I've never had to plan an event. So we gave uh, my personal books as gifts to everybody that came. Wow. We gave out over 350 books. Oh. And, oh. and they only paid $25 to get in. <laughs> we lost money that year. But you know what? It was a learning experience. Right. You, just, you know, but, and so now we do. We do well. And by the way, all of our money goes to, we pick a school once a year and we buy mm -hmm. school supplies for the teachers. So, mm -hmm. but in order to have a good um, team, they have to know your mission. They have mm -hmm. to know the why. Why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Why are we spending all this time planning this event? Two reasons. One, we want to bring women to the cross. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hit them over the head with it because we're not all that preachy, preachy. But we want them to come to the cross. We want them to have such a the best time they've ever had in a church mm. for certain. But sometimes the best time they've ever had, period. So we we shower them with gifts. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, when we are done with the event, we ask our volunteers to fill out a form. And mm. we want to know, you know, what do you think God is telling us to do differently? What That's do you a great strategy. Yeah. yeah. What do you think God is praising us for doing correctly? And what do you think he's telling us not to do anymore that we're done with mm. that? So include mm. your volunteers in the preparation of next year's event. We pick a theme. We pick a scripture. And I send out to all the girls, what, what matters to you? What do you think we should be talking about next year? The day after the conference, we start planning the next one. Yeah. And we all vote and we pick one that works yeah. for all of us. Yeah. So love your volunteers. They are your <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. And when you need more, where do you go find more volunteers? How do you get more volunteers? Well, fortunately, we haven't really need, need <laughs> we have people that online that say, Can we be a volunteer? Mm -hmm. Um you you get them from your audience. People will come to this and then say, What can I do to help you next year? As long as it's something that they see is a real benefit and that they see how happy everybody is and they, you know, they want to be part of it. So I guess the answer to your question is plan and secure an event that is full of joy and everyone will want to be a part. Yeah. I feel like what you're saying without really exactly saying it is that the mission and the vision has to be so clear that people can say, this has got my name on it. Like exactly. they can, it resonates with them so deeply that they're like, want to, I need to be more involved yeah. in this than just yeah. showing up. Exactly. And by the way, of course they have to love Jesus, but I don't care what church they go to. Yeah. I don't care <laughs> what 
you know, where they are, as long as they know that Jesus is number one. Yeah. They're in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. that, Because sometimes you have people that (laughs) we did have somebody one time that um, was going to be a vendor and she was selling jewelry, but we didn't investigate. And her jewelry was all about Gemini and, you know. Okay. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So you got to make sure. Yeah. Right. Right. So you actually have five simple strategies to help us grow our audiences. Oh yeah. Well, um, the first one is, and this one is amazing. You put it out there to people that are coming that if they bring a group of 10 or more, they get a prize. Everybody mm-hmm. wants a free prize. <laughs> and then when you're at the engagement, you have everybody that came with a group to stand And you give them an applause. What church are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And people love recognition. And so you just have to do that. And then also, um, we always give a really beautiful basket to the team leader who brought the most people. Ah. People, they'll bring 30 and 40 people. (laughs) Nice. That's a lot of people. Right. Right. And we had one woman that has been to every single event. Her name is Linda. And she's from Rochester, New York. And I mean, she just brings a gang every single time. So one year we'd had her come up front and tell us, you know, what's the benefit yeah. of being a group leader? I mean, that's yeah. a sales, you know, that's sales. And um, uh, also, okay, so, so the second thing you should do is you should you should visit local churches, yeah. ask to speak to the um, women's worship leader or the mm-hmm. women's group leader and talk to them about your event. And even ask them, can I come to one of your um, meetings and tell people about the day of joy? Mm -hmm. And and then if they're open to it, you give them posters, you give them, you know, and it works. Um, Of course, social media. We do billboards. We do billboards in the city of Syracuse because so many people have come to the day of joy and we don't want them to miss it. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the things we do. Um, by the way, if you if you look at your Christian friends, you will find somebody that's in advertising, somebody that's in printing, somebody that's, you know, yeah. wherever, where, <laughs> and try to use those people because they'll give right. you much better prices and their heart right. is in it. Right. And invite, 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 invite. Every time mm-hmm. you are introduced to a new person, you find a way to talk about your event. Yeah. If you're on a plane, if you're in the airport, wherever you might be, a restaurant, talk about your event. Yeah. You got to talk, you got to talk it up. So, um, and then also, like when I speak at corporate events, I have to be very careful because you have to be politically correct in these events. But I always have information on my book table about the day of joy. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to pick it up, they can. Yeah, love that. Yeah. I know some of them that I've been involved in. Um, we have ambassadors, and each ambassador gets twenty packets. That's twenty churches, and they just oh, go nice. and they go out with these posters and bulletin inserts and everything ready to roll, and that's they great. go drop them off. And even if nobody's at the church, we leave them in the church door handle or in the basket or whatever they have there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one thing we've really found is like what you were saying too. It's just. Uh, a personal invite actually is the best ever. I mean, out of everything that you can do promotionally, a mm-hmm. personal invite is the best. And so to equip yeah. your people and really like right. use, I love the idea of giving recognition and prizes oh, and, you know, that's, that's brilliant. That's given. And yeah. also too, um, at the end of the conference, uh, whoever's our host will say, did you have a good time? And they all go, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Right now I want everybody here to think about who would they like to invite next year? Your right. neighbor, your friend, your sister, your, yeah. Your, yeah. And love remember, her. they don't have to. They don't have to love Jesus yet. <laughs> you know. Yeah, love so, that. <laughs> that's great. Event who are not believers. Sure, sure. Of it's course. Yeah. Fun. And that's who yeah. we want. You know. Yeah. We want non-believers to come. Yeah. Yeah. So, Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So seven ways to bring groups of women to your event. You've already touched on a couple of those ways. I think we did all of them, didn't we? Okay, did we? Okay, great. Yeah. Well, we'll just go to the next one then. Okay, yeah. 
Oh, you know what I wanted to add though on this one, the seven ways. Um, yeah, there's a website that I host. It's a sister site to womenspeakers.com. It's called womensevents.info. And oh. it's got the major women's events. I don't even know if you know about that. If I'm like, um, it's got the major women's events on there. So you'll find Priscilla Sure and Joyce Myers and all those are there. Called again. Um, uh, women's events dot info. And so like for you as a featured speaker, you can just add yours at no extra charge. Otherwise other people pay $79 Wonderful. to um, oh, add their events there. Great. But it's a place where women's ministry leaders can go to find major women's events that are open to the public. Now, obviously, like if it's a retreat for 30, you're not, if you're not going to find it on there because there's no room for you to bring a group to it. But oh. if there is space at the event for you yeah. to bring your women's ministry group, you'll find a lot of those at women's events.info. Yeah. So good place to promote yours. We as have well as a thousand women at this. Event. Awesome. Yeah. That's so great. I love yeah. that. Love and that. Our next one is March 25th. 2023 so oh, that'll be great and that's did you say where is it in what? it's going to be in syracuse at syracuse. believes chapel new york okay. yeah all right so we're going to go through the eight step formula for holding a successful conference and the first one is you must have a team of volunteers who feel appreciated and we did we did count that already yes, but that's, that's the one of the most important the first one is prayer you know you you have to before you even start planning Jesus, what do you want me to talk about yeah, okay. this, this time? What is it you want us to share? Inspire our speakers, Lord, to be what you want. I guess the big thing is keep in your head, this is not what I want. This is right. what you want, you know? Um, fill it with laughter. Everybody wants to laugh. And we do skits. We do silly stuff. We interview one another. We do whatever we can to make it funny, you know? And people yeah. just love that. Um, and, and keep people involved. Uh, during breaks, we throw basketball, not basketballs, beach ball <laughs> around in the in the auditorium. And, you know, uh, we'll ask a question. And if somebody answers, we give them, we throw them like a stress ball or something. Yeah. It's keeping people alert and always Engaged. involved. Yeah, uh, I love that. Love yeah. That. And also to make sure your team, especially your welcoming team at the door. Right respect and honor every single person that comes through number one thing never disagree with someone coming through that door whatever they want and need the answer is yes and if you can't provide it it's yes let me get someone that can help you mm, i love that yeah yeah i, I mean, love that. that that's that's common customer service you know yeah. Yeah. It's customer service 101 but remember you're the hands and free feet of jesus if you're argumentative to somebody, mm -hmm. you don't belong there. <laughs> you really don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and always recognize people. Bring people to the front. Like this year, some woman that has been coming to our event for years texted me and she said, I would like to make crosses for everybody that comes to the event for, mm. at no charge. So she has been embroidering these crosses. Wow. Bookmarks. For five, six hundred people. I mean, we're definitely bringing her up on the stage. You, know? <laughs> you yeah. got to give people recognition. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest thing for a successful, uh, successful event is that every person involved, the worship team, the lighting guy, everybody has to know the why. Why yeah. are we doing this? Yeah. What is our purpose, our mission? They <laughs> must know that. And, um, Always give more than you think you should. Always give more food. People mm -hmm. love it. <laughs> um, give more gifts. Give more praise. Give more recognition. Give, 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 give. Mm -hmm. um, and, and give really great speakers as well. We generally have three keynote speakers and one testimonial because mm -hmm. the testimonial people need to know, you know, how lives are changed. Yeah. And also, too, you got to know your audience. You got to know who your your demographics are, so that when you're promoting it, you promote to the right people. So, right. just to always be the hands and feet of Jesus. <clears throat> and always ask God, where do you want me to go? And throughout the event, Jesus, what do you want us to feed these people? <laughs> you know, right. Jesus, what do you want us to give away as free gifts in our little goodie bag? Mm -hmm. Jesus, what do you want us to play as far as music right. goes? Right. Yeah. 
It says it right. One of the things you said at the very beginning, we're going to kind of bring it down to the end here, is never ever think about profit. And um, I think that when we begin to have that be our focus, um, it kind of tangles up our heart. I remember years ago, I was praying about money. There was one point I was praying about money, praying, begging, praying mm -hmm. about money. Mm -hmm. And God put in my heart, he, he just put in my heart, he said, what would happen if you prayed for souls as much as you pray for money? Whoa. And I was so convicted right in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Right. Exactly. If I'm doing what he calls me to do, he's, he's going to provide. And he doesn't always provide yeah. from yeah. the people who come to the event. Right. Sometimes he provides in different ways. Yeah. But here's what I try to tell the volunteers because af after the event, the first question anybody ever asked me is how many people came, you right, know, right. and I tell them, but it took me personally a long time to not mm. think about that. The numbers. Of course, the people that attend, that's our level. That's how we rate success, but that's not how God rates respect. No. Uh, yeah. If somebody said to me, how many people came to the altar call? <laughs> the number I'm proud to give because yeah. we generally have our altar call you know, 10 people deep all the way around that big altar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stop thinking about the money. The money will get there. It'll be there. I, I don't know if I told you this story or not, but that first year where I screwed up financially, <laughs> we were $4,000 in the hole. Sure. Right before Easy that. to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were all praying and everybody was nervous. And I wasn't though. I kind of felt like, you know what? Worst case, I'll take it out of my own money and pay it. I didn't want to, but I would have. Well, uh, not even four days before our event, I got a call from a customer in South Carolina that had hired some speaker to speak and last minute she canceled. And she said to me, I'm embarrassed to ask you to come for such a low amount, but we only have in our budget $4,000. <laughs> um, it, it's two days from now, you know. I'm like, you know what? That's a gift from God right there. Right. So I went to North Carolina. I did the event. I got the check and I turned it over to the day of joy. Sure. We had no debt that first year, even though we were stupid and didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> you know, I, I really, I, even just last week, God, just in my heart again, in my journal, I wrote that God was speaking to my heart. Do not look at the numbers. Do exactly. not look at the dollars. Do yeah. not look at the comments. Do not look at the likes. Do not look at the shares. Just do what I call you to do yeah. with your whole heart. Yeah. And, and here's what helped me to understand that. When you're counting people, when you're counting money, when you're counting likes and shares and all of that, that's your ego. Yeah. That's thinking about you. When you don't look at all of that, then you're thinking about the mission and you're thinking about Jesus and you're thinking about the, the goals that you have to help people come to the cross. Yeah. And, you know, I, ba I balance it with um, the numbers are important because every number is, reflects a person, a soul that Jesus died for. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, the, the numbers are important. It's not like they're not there. We should look at them. But when they become the mini God that's when we get in trouble yeah. when the yeah. money becomes the goal instead yeah. of the vehicle, you know, like it's, yeah. it's like, um, it mm -hmm. has to be in the right position yes. in order for us to experience the fullness of what God has for us and for the people that we're mm -hmm. working with. So yeah. I love that to just keep yeah. that in perspective. Absolutely. One more thing when talking about successful events, respect your audience, yeah. begin and end on time. Yes. You know, I, if there's if there's only 10 people there, begin on time. Doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I, I, I used to work for Dale Carnegie, and that was one of the things they taught, was mm -hmm. that you start a meeting when you say you're going to start it, and mm -hmm. you end it when you say you're going to end it. Mm -hmm. Now, I end my meeting right before the altar call, because mm -hmm. the altar call is led by the Holy Spirit, and that could last an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, you know, very discreetly, listen we are at the end of our conference now. Mm -hmm. And if you must rush off to pick up the kids or whatever, please do that quietly, but we will mm -hmm. stay here as long as the Holy spirit wants right. us. Right. So, 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just giving the Holy Spirit freedom throughout the whole thing, Absolutely. but also remembering, I mean, you know, the thing I think about time is that God's got, you know, the 24 hour day that he confines himself to here on earth, except for one day. I was just listening to that the other day, uh, reading through the Bible. You know, there was one day that he had the sun stay longer for Joshua's uh, battle, oh. you know, oh. but other than that, he pretty much confines himself to the 24 hour day. So mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. we are saying, oh, if the Holy Spirit leads, we can just start late and go late or whatever. Yeah, but just remember that the person who's the God who's modeling this for us actually has schedules. <laughs> he right. keeps a yeah. schedule. Yeah. And so we can too, and we can still let him lead. Well, Yvonne, this has been amazing. Did you have another thought right there? I, I was going to say, you let the Holy Spirit lead, yes. but you give people an opportunity to go when it's Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. Yeah. The freedom for everybody yeah. to do what they need to do. That's yeah. Great. Good. And I, yes, yeah, so much fun. And I love I love how you do things to you. You set very clear. And I think for women, this is super important to set very clear expectations. Mm -hmm. And guys, guys tend to be less. Uh, I learned this in the restaurant industry. There was a change one day we were catering and everybody thought it was going to be a different restaurant catering. And when they came into the uh, cafeteria to have their catered meal, then um, the men seem to just have no trouble with that. But the women freaked out. They had their <laughs> they had their calorie counters out and like, well, I was thinking it was going to be this. And now we have to do this. And, you know, it was it's it really taught me a lesson about women that women really need to know God has made us right. And you know, when we're expecting a baby, he gives us about nine months to get used to it mentally. You know, he knows how we're built, you know, and he, <laughs> but, but I think as an event coordinator, it's something to keep in mind. If you make a promise, keep your promise. If yeah. you've always done it one way and you're shifting it up, let them know before they get there. Exactly. Don't shock. Don't think, oh, they'll love this surprise. Most women don't actually. <laughs> Don't surprise them. <laughs> Unless it's a free gift. <laughs> Unless it's a free gift or something just to add on to what they already knew yeah. they were getting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, Yvonne, this was fantastic. And I'm so grateful you could join. I know you have such a busy day today, but so grateful. You guys want to be sure to check out Yvonne's website over at YvonneConte.com. Yvonne, when they get there, what are they going to find? Well, there are a lot of videos and it kind of talks about what I do as a speaker. But listen, you guys are welcome anytime to email me, call me. All my digits are on the web. Just <laughs> Google Yvonne Conti and you'll find me. <laughs> Your numbers be there. Okay. So thanks so much. And you guys also, she's available to speak at your women's events. You guys want to check out Day of Joy, the conference that's coming up. And thank you so much for joining us for this interview. So happy to have you guys here too with us. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.